Hello, how are you doing? I've been feeling a bit nostalgic for last winter when the new film version of Little Women came out directed by Greta Gerwig, and I'd never read Little Women before, so I read the book for the first time, which was such a wonderful experience. I know I'm an adult man reading Little Women for the first time, which is slightly odd, but I just loved the experience of it and getting into all of the characters' lives, and um, and then to go see the wonderful film version of it, and Gerwig made some really smart and interesting choices I thought in how she told the story on the screen and it was just so wonderful and you know it was before 2020 and the whole mess of this year and and it just felt like a happier time so I and I just happened across this article on Radical Reads of Greta Gerwig's top 10 books um, her favorite books and uh, so I, I you know I love a book list so uh, I was going through this list and picking out which ones I've read and which ones I haven't read and uh, and so I thought I'd talk through it and um, give Greta Gerwig's commentary on uh, these books and then uh, give my own thoughts about the books of the ones that I've read and uh, I'd be really interested to know how many of these you've read yourself and uh, how much how many you're interested in reading so uh, yeah and I think it's a good way to set a sort of reading list of uh, this um, you know this great uh, actress and director's uh, list of her favorite books that uh, that we can go and read so um, I've read six and a bit of these books and I'll, ex I'll explain that a bit in, in a minute. Uh, so first off there is Middlemarch by George Eliot and uh, Greta Gerwig says that it is a glorious, sprawling, generous. It makes you wish you had not judged characters so quickly and that you could grow old with all of them. I read somewhere that it is a novel for adults and it is, truly. It is a book I hope to read at every decade of my life because I think each each time it will have something new to teach me. And I definitely agree with that. I mean, I've only read it once myself uh, when I was in my 20s, so I think I'm definitely due for a reread of uh, this novel. But yeah, it's it's so sprawling. There's so much to the story. And even though I think it's slightly clunky at times because it's um, kind of two novels that have been kind of merged together into one. Um, if you've read about how George Eliot wrote it, um, yeah, that's kind of how it came together. But um, but it's so wonderful in the story itself. And I, um, the thing I remember most is um, the the protagonist's younger sister um, calls her older sister Dodo. And, and and I just remember whenever she she's um, sort of slightly chiding her, she's like, oh, Dodo. And uh, I just always found that really funny. But, um, but yeah, I'd really like there's not a huge amount else from it that I can remember so I know I should go back and reread this classic and um, then she chooses Nightwood by Juna Barnes and um, which I'm so happy about I love this it's kind of a cult novel and um, and Gerwig says uh, there is something mysterious and unreachable about this novel it makes you want to peer behind it somehow it is rigorous and brave never allowing the reader to become complacent it is tragic and erotic and no matter how many times you read it it eludes your grasp and uh, yeah, I think that sums it up well, because it is basically a kind of tragic romance story between a, um, a few different women and the jealousy that they feel. But it's also about a larger than life uh, sort of doctor character who's um, also a transvestite and he's just yeah very um, bombastic. And, uh, and yeah, there's something very tragic and solemn about this this novel and I've read it a few times in my life actually and you know it had a really different effect at different times um sometimes there was a period when I was really suffering from heartbreak and I very much connected to it on on that level um but uh yeah the the language of it is very strange and Juna Barnes was a fascinating person in herself um who did a lot of journalism and um, wrote non-fiction about her her um her milieu at the the time in um, Parisian society in the early 20th century and uh yeah so um yeah I think this is a novel that you can always go back to as well uh, then she picks The Idiot by Elif Batuman, a, a slightly more recent novel from a few years ago, where she says she accompanies in this novel what I'm always trying to do in film, make the mundane extraordinary. 
uh, not by adorning it, but by telling it as it is. It combines deadpan humor with romantic yearning and makes you want to read more novels and maybe also try to learn Russian. Um, so I don't know if this novel succeeded in doing that for me and wanting to learn Russian, um, but I, and I had very mixed feelings about this novel. I know a lot of people really loved it, and uh, but I just found it was, I think it was slightly too long and um, too drawn out. And I mean, I found it slightly humorous and funny and it's a you know basically a university novel about a wayward young woman who is um yeah kind of her not sure what she wants to do in life and is just kind of following this meandering path and um making lots of observations which are very funny and sort of cunning and, and insightful but um but yeah at the, the same time it just felt too long and drawn out for me so um yeah I did enjoy it but uh just um yeah not as much as some other people have I think um then she picks the death of the heart by Elizabeth Bowman um which I've a novel I've not read and uh, she says the plot of the novel is woven invisibly under you and pulled out just as you are settling in it is one of the best novels about a young woman that I've ever read. These moments of transformation and epiphany go by unnoticed by the outside world, but we have the privilege of being in Portia's mind with her as she's trying to figure out exactly how the world is put together and why people do what they do. And uh, yeah, that's a very intriguing description. Um, Elizabeth of Bowen is a writer I've never read before but you know I know she's very much respected and um yeah I've just never got around to reading her so if you'd recommend Elizabeth Bowen I'd be really interested um in the comments below uh then she picks The White Album by Joan Didion and this is a novel uh, uh sorry not a novel it's a book of essays and uh I've read some of the essays but not all of them I've just had this for a long period of time and it's one of those books that I've just sort of dipped in and out of at certain times and you can see on the sides there's tea stains on it so uh, yeah I've had this for quite a while and um, she says uh, she is my patron saint and this collection of essays helped me understand the world I was not around for but that seemed shaped my life her truths are tiny knives piercing the surface and bleeding out the illusions of life, especially life in California. And what an amazing description that is of uh, these essays. And yeah, and I've read um, in full a number of other books by Joan Didion. She's like Salching Towards Bethlehem and then some of her novels like Play It As It Lays. And yeah, she's so incredibly insightful and intelligent and witty and cutting with uh, her writing and yeah she's obviously yeah such an incredible writer so um so yeah I should finish reading these essays or go back and reread um some some other ones uh then she picks the Argonauts by Maggie Nelson and uh she says this book doesn't fit neatly into a category it's personal but also global it doesn't prescribe anything it raises questions it allows the reader to feel as if they are watching this brilliant woman think in real time it seems as if you are inside her mind with her it's funny and sexy and made me cry and it is one of the best books on being a stepmother I've ever encountered um, which is a really interesting observation and, and um, yeah and, and Nelson's writing is so personal but at the same time almost like academic and very incredibly thoughtful in how she approaches her subject matter and the, the sources and references she draws upon to inform her opinions and point of view. And uh, yeah, I thought this book was incredible and just blew me away like it did other people. And I was so glad I got to see Maggie Nelson speak at the South Bank Center a couple of years ago. Um, she was so incredible in person as well. And uh, yeah, just love her writing. Uh, then she picks Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, I have this special edition of the novel. Um, it's quite a long novel and yeah, it's so wonderful. And um, she says, in this book, Miss Adichie has constructed a full-on romance that has the addictive power of a Jane Austen novel but uh, with the specifics of life in Nigeria, as well as life in the United States as an immigrant. 
I fell in love with uh, Efemelu and Ebenze uh, in a way that I haven't felt since I was a child reading novels for the first time. And yeah, and I think she she gets that right. It, you know, it has the sort of feel and texture of these classic novels that you just fall in love with, um, but at the same time is about uh, the modern world and subject matter and and um, and yeah, like and a couple from who are from Nigeria and America and uh, yeah, the whole um, struggle of a uh, transnational romance. Then she cites The Dud Avocado by Elaine Dundee, um, which is a novel I don't have a physical copy of, but which I meant to get a copy of because there was a new edition of it recently through uh, Virago Books. And uh, and i known so many people who um, said that this is such a funny and wonderful novel. So, um, so yeah, I need to pick up a copy of that. Um, so Gerwig says it is funny, funny, funny. Uh, she's wicked and wise. The main character is a total mess and a joy to hang out with. Every page has a great one-liner and quip, and I felt like I never put down my pencil. I kept wanting to underline something. And uh, yeah, I've not read this novel, but it feels like it almost has the texture of like Francis Ha or Mistress America or, you know, something like that. A novel, one of those great uh, films that Gerwig is, has been in. So, um, so yeah, I'd really like to to read this. Um, then she says uh, her next pick is Lives of Girls and Women by Alice Munro, the great short story writer. And I've read many of Munro's short stories, but I've not read this collection in particular, I don't think. So Gerwig says, Alice Munro always gets to the thing inside me that knows with certainty that this is my one life. There is a penetrating sense of ultimate aloneness in her writing, and in just a sentence she can turn from the present to the future and then all the way into the past, making the reader feel as if they are experiencing the sweep of life as moments accumulate and then double back and reconsider. It presents at first as just a drip, 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 and then before you know it, you're standing in a waterfall. <laughs> wow, what an amazing description that is of Monroe's writing. I think that's totally right. I can't sum it up any better. But yeah, that's exactly how I felt when I've read Alice Monroe's short stories before. And yeah, how she gets in a literary way, like the essence of life in that way. I think that's so beautiful and so well put. And uh, then finally, she chooses To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Um, I have this special edition um, from Vintage Books, um, which are really beautiful. Uh, editions and uh, so Gerwig says a classic for a reason my mind was warped into a new shape by her prose and it will never be the same again the metaphysics she presents in the book are enacted in a way that allowed me to begin to understand that corner of philosophy and yeah that's that's so right because yeah there's almost a like scientific quality to Wolf's beautiful poetic prose, uh, just the yeah the way she is able to encapsulate all these big ideas into this beautiful language is is so incredible. And uh, you know, like I've said before, this isn't my favorite novel by Wolf. I absolutely love Virginia Wolf, but her novel The Waves, I think, is you know my absolute favorite novel of all time. Um, but and when I went back and tried to to read this, um, I found it slightly more. Uh, plotting than I had in the past. I, I think maybe I need to go back and try to, to read it again. I mean, I read it in my early 20s and absolutely loved it. But yeah, just several years ago when I went back to reread it, I, I found it slightly more difficult and um, which, yes, yeah, kind of strange because I would think early on in my life I would have found it more difficult. But uh, but yeah, that's that's just the way that I read it. Um, but, um, so, but yeah, I'm sure if I go back and read it again, like I went back and reread Orlando uh, a couple of years ago and just fell in love with it again and I'm sure I'd find the the same if I tried to to read to the lighthouse again so so yeah those are Greta Gerwig's top 10 books um how many of these books have you read and do you agree with her choices and all of her thoughts about them uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, yeah it's just it's just fun to look at a celebrity's list of uh, her favorite books and obviously I really respect Greta Gerwig so let me know your thoughts and I'll speak to you again soon bye everyone